Good day, beloved of Christ. Welcome to prayer on Friday, the 7th of October. This being Friday, we will begin with our penitential rite. We'll take a moment's quiet. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Let us, friends, confess our sins against God, our neighbor, ourselves, and creation. Together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us worship. Psalm 142 is a heartbreaking cry of distress to the Lord from someone who may be imprisoned There are many forms of imprisonment, circumstances, addictions, literal imprisonment. Let us join our hearts together as we cry to the Lord for deliverance. I cry to the Lord with my voice. To the Lord I make loud supplication. I pour out my complaint before the Lord and tell the Lord all my trouble. When my spirit languishes within me, you know my path. In the way wherein I walk, they have hidden a trap for me. I look to my right hand and find no one who knows me. I have no place to flee to, and no one cares for me. I cry out to you, O Lord. I say, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Listen to my cry for help, for I have been brought very low. Save me from those who pursue me, for they are too strong for me. Bring me out of prison, that I may give thanks to your name. When you have dealt bountifully with me, the righteous will gather around me. Let us pray. God, our Consoler and Redeemer, save your people, coerced and made captive by the powers of evil, and bring us into the way of freedom and liberty, prepared by the sacrifice of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Together, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Micah chapter 3, verses 9 to chapter 4, verse 5. Here the prophecies continue, this against the rulers of the house of Jacob. Hear this, you rulers of the house of Jacob, you chiefs of the house of Israel, who detest justice and make crooked all that is straight, who build Zion with crime, Jerusalem with iniquity. Her rulers judge for gifts, her priests give rulings for a fee, and her prophets divine for pay. Yet they rely upon the Lord, saying, The Lord is in our midst. No calamity shall overtake us. Assuredly, because of you, Zion shall be plowed as a field, and Jerusalem shall become heaps of ruins, and the temple mount a shrine in the woods. Chapter 4. In the days to come, the mount of the Lord's house shall stand firm above the mountains, and it shall tower above the hills. The people shall gaze on it with joy, and the many nations shall go and shall say, Come, let us go up to the mount of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that the Lord may instruct us in his ways, that we may walk in his paths. For instruction shall come forth from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Thus he will judge among the many peoples and arbitrate for the multitude of nations, however distant. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not take up sword against nation. They shall never again know war. And every one shall sit under their grapevine or fig tree with no one to disturb them. 
for it was the Lord of hosts who spoke. Though all the peoples walk, each in the names of its gods, we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A few things to note in these very pregnant passages. Firstly, notice how the decay of society is diagnosed by the prophet as injustice. Leaders make their judgment for a bribe. Priests teach for pay. Prophets tell fortunes for money also. And yet they say the Lord is with them, but there is no sense of justice in their hearts. And the prophecy then is in verse 12. Therefore, because of you, and really because of your injustice, therefore, because of you, Zion, the city of God, will be plowed like a field. That means, of course, it'll be leveled. Jerusalem will become a heap of rubble, the temple hill, a mound overgrown with thickets. That last verse, Micah three twelve, is quoted by the prophet Jeremiah perhaps a hundred years later. This t- and this is one of the rare occurrences where one prophet quotes another. This indicates to us that the prophetic books, of course, were studied in the ancient world and prophets past influence prophets yet to come. As is so common in the prophetic literature, the forecast of destruction, of punishment for societal injustice is followed by the offer of hope as people turn. In chapter 4, we have a messianic vision, the mountain of the Lord. In some unknown future, the day of the Messiah's reign, where the peoples of the nations will stream to Jerusalem to hear the word of the Lord, that they might walk in the light of God. It's a beautiful vision of the restoration of righteousness among the peoples, and true justice will be meted out, not by corrupt leaders, but by the Lord God. There will be an end to war. This famous passage They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Everyone will sit under their own vine, under their own fig tree, and no one will make them afraid, for the Lord Almighty has spoken. In the last days, the fortunes of the people of God will be restored. The destruction caused by the corruption of the people will be overturned and the people of God will be vindicated by the power of God. Until that day, friends, let us continue to serve the Lord and to strive for justice, not only in our own lives and families, but in the lives of the society in which we are blessed to live. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. As we now turn to our intercessions, please respond to the prompt, Almighty God, with hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world, Almighty God, hear our prayer. Inspire the daughters and sons of your church for prophetic witness to your truth. And upon old and young, give clarity of vision to acknowledge your saving power in the world for nations of the world and its leaders. Almighty God, hear our prayer. Overcome the babble of lies and misunderstanding among the nations. Let all peoples hear in their own language and in truth your unifying message of love. For planet Earth, our home, Almighty God, hear our prayer. By your Spirit, renew the earth Make us good stewards of its resources. Teach us to build economies of sustainability and justice. And teach us to enjoy the abundance of the earth rightly. For those who are in need of healing, Almighty God, hear our prayer. Among those known to us, God, we pray for the sick. For Ricardo, for Richard, for Rose, Nola, Nancy, Joan, Keith, Doug, for Nick's son, Savario, Judith, 
Audrey, for all young women carrying babies. Send your healing spirit upon those who are sick in body or mind. Restore them to health and to the joy of your salvation. For our neighbors and members of our civic community, Almighty God, hear our prayer. Teach us to be good neighbors, to live in peace with one another, and in friendship share the joys and burdens of daily life. For our children, Almighty God, hear our prayer. Bless our children and grandchildren, protect them from danger and pandemic, and help parents and caregivers nurture them so that they may mature in wisdom and grow in grace. Almighty God, hear our prayer. Gathering our prayers, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Friends, the peace of God which passes understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God, Almighty Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier be upon you and all that you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Have a blessed day today, Friday, TGIF.